In this video, we're looking at how to dynamically remove null columns from Power Query so that we're only left with the columns that contain data. Now we want this to be dynamic because when we import new data, it may have more or less null columns. Therefore, we want this to update automatically so we're always left with just our data. That's the plan. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here we are in Power Query, and as you can see, our data contains various null columns, and we want to remove these columns without hard coding any column names. So that means that our updates will be dynamic. The first step is to remove any steps where the column names have been hard coded. Here in this example, we can see that change type has been automatically applied, and it has hard coded those column names. So we're going to start by deleting that step. Now for this method to work, we do need a small amount of M code. So I'm going to click on the FX icon to create a new step. And we want to use a function that's called table.profile. And we want to use this on our previous step that was called source. Table.profile gives us information about our table. You can see here, we have a column that contains all of the column names. We also have columns with other information, such as min, max, and so on. The columns that we're interested in are count and null count, because if the count of the rows and the null count contain the same number, that means that column contains all null values. So I'll go to add column and click custom column. We're going to call this contains values, contains values. And we want to check where the count does not equal the null count. And I'll click OK. That adds a new column. If the value is true, it means that our column contains values. So let's filter to just include where the values are true. Now this table only contains items that have values. I'll now right click on the column and select drill down. This creates a list of the column names that we want to keep. I'm just going to rename this step and we'll call this keep list. Now we're going to click on the FX icon and we're going to refer to our source step. So that is our table before we applied the table.profile. This gives us all of our data back. Now if I select some columns, and then go to remove columns and remove other columns, this gives us the syntax that we need. So here, in this example, we have kept item and size. Instead, we're going to use our keep list. And when that updates, we now get only the columns that contain data. And there we go. All we needed was that table.profile function. Now this may seem like quite a lot of steps, so wouldn't it be nice to change this into a custom function that we can apply to any table? Well, let's go try that next. To turn this query into a custom function, I'm going to start by right-clicking and going to duplicate. And then we're going to call this FX remove null columns. Next, we want to edit the code. So from the home ribbon, I'll go to advanced editor. In here, we can see the code for all of our previous steps. At the start, we're going to declare the inputs for our custom function. Now for this function to work, we only need one input, and that is the table that we want to work with. So I'll enter an opening bracket. We're going to call that parameter table, and that will have a table data type. So we'll enter as table. To turn this into a function, we need to use the arrow, which is the equals, and then the greater than symbol. The first step is the source step. This is getting the data from our workbook. We don't need this step. Our next step is where we used table.profile. You can see we referenced the source step. Now this source step doesn't exist anymore. And for this, we want to reference our table. Now in our code, source is also referenced in custom2, which means here we could reference table again, but because this is just one step, referencing another step, we can actually delete this step entirely. And where we reference custom two, we can then use table. 
When we click done, that will now create our custom function. You can see the icon has changed to an FX icon to indicate that this is a function. Now all that's left is for us to apply this function. Let's go back to our previous query. We're going to delete all of our previous steps. And now to apply our custom function, I'll click on the FX icon. And our function is called FX. You can see that there in the IntelliSense. I'll press tab to accept that. So FX remove null columns. Our one parameter was the table. That's going to be source, which was our previous step. And when we commit that, you can see that it now removes those null columns automatically. And there we go. We've changed our query into a custom function and we can apply this to any query within our workbook. Not only that, we can also copy and paste this custom function into different workbooks so we can use it wherever we like. Now, if you like this video, you're going to love our Excel Academy. That's the place where we teach people like you how to save huge amounts of time with Excel. So you can spend less time at work and more time doing what you love. Just head over to excelfthegrid.com and check it out. And once you've done that, why not watch this video next? It contains lots more awesome power query techniques. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.